Everyone likes to like things that are cool, but you know what's even cooler than liking something cool? That's right, liking something cool before it's considered cool. Now that's cool. I'm telling you, in about 10 years time, I could be considered a real trailblazer for my bread bag clip collection, well before they spike in popularity. So what about video games? Are we actually going to say there was a time older games weren't considered cool? Well, there's always been people who have thought they're cool, just not nearly as many. What you gotta remember is that back in a decade like the 90s, video games were changing at a far more rapid pace than they are now. Something like the NES was pretty popular at the beginning of the decade, and then you had something like the Dreamcast by the end of it. A huge gap, not just as far as what video games looked like, but also how they played. And the faster things change, the faster the older things get perceived as old. Just ask these two bananas here. I remember playing the NES with my cousin, who lived at my grandma's house during the back half of the 90s, and already, by that point, the NES was considered old. It wasn't considered novel the way it is now. In that case, it was just something that a kid who only ever got things that cost less than 10 bucks at Goodwill would have. And let's just say the neighbor kids weren't banging on the front door to get in. Actually, one time they did, but that was because my cousin stole their lunch or something and they wanted to beat them up, not play NES. But don't worry, my gramps came out of the garage like a banshee and shook one of those orange picker things at him to chase him off. Although, we probably could have chased them off with the Turbo Tunnel in Battletoads, am I right? Of course, there were still people who did think the NES was cool during the late 90s, and not simply because it was cheap to get. But back then, if you played older games, that's all it was. Just somebody who happened to play older games. It was less of an identity choice, the way it can feel nowadays with people calling themselves retro gamers. In fact, the term retro gaming wasn't really around back then either. Retro was a word chosen, dictionary definition be darned, to make the hobby sound cooler and perhaps more legitimate. Calling something old is typically not flattering. I mean, if somebody said to you, hey, you got an old looking face, compliment or insult. Then there's the word vintage, despite technically being more accurate, some find it sound a little too stuffy and pretentious. Are we talking about wine or video games here? Plus, if you look at the origin of the word retro, it has to do with going back, so it's not a total reach. It's not like we decided to call it Rum Chunder Gaming or something, and thus the term retro gaming was appropriated to refer to playing older games. It always reminds me of that quote from the movie Wreck-It Ralph when Ralph says, the gamers say we're retro, which I think means old but cool. I think part of the attempt to come up with a cool term for playing old games was to combat the stigma against it. There was much more of a why would you play old games mindset back then. Nowadays if somebody said why would you play old games, I'd just respond with why do you hate life? There wasn't the same kind of stigma against other old forms of media such as movies or music, save for the occasional car trip where you really wish your dad would have considered something other than his old favorites, but nobody says yeah I'm a retro music music listener or I'm a retro movie watcher because it was never really considered all that weird to listen to old music or watch old movies. And while I'm sure there's exceptions, it's not to the degree video games dealt with that kind of stigma. If you collect something like old vinyl, laser disc movies or something like that, then sure you might identify yourself that way, but only in the sense of being a collector. Remember, not all retro gamers are collectors. It can be hard to say exactly when retro gaming became a trendy thing given it happened gradually, although people will point to different years, but most people like to point to when the kids who grew up playing these games got older themselves and decided they wanted to revisit them. Problem is, people are different ages and not everyone grew up at the same time. Heck, some of us are still working on it. Well, for a lot of people, during the time in between being kids playing these games and being adults later on playing them, they were either playing whatever games were current at the time instead or perhaps even nothing. I know some people who actually stopped playing games at one point in their life because they thought they were just for kids and later realized as adults, that's just stupid. I've always felt the same way about making faces. Why should only kids get to do this? Folks, your adult faces are still capable. Give it a shot. But when it comes to games, remember, not only did the stigma of playing games that were older used to be more prevalent, but also the stigma of playing video games when you were no longer a kid. And in some cases, playing 
playing the games you played as a kid. If I tried to play some 16-bit Sonic or Mario with my high school friends, I might as well have just busted out toy cars and started playing pretend with them. They'd have just said it's too kiddy, let's play some PS2 instead. So there were far more situations back then where you really were going against the grain to be playing older games. Plus, like I said earlier, the gaming industry was moving so fast for a while. If you blinked, you might miss something. It's a lot easier to not look back when something new that excites you is constantly popping up. Until the Xbox 360 PS3 generation, most console generations only lasted about four or five years. As a result of newer games and consoles moving in so fast, there was a push to move the old stuff out and with no widespread perception at the time that gaming would be something that has a history people would care about, games were treated more like yesterday's newspaper rather than cherished artifacts. It wasn't uncommon to find games for next to nothing, something people like to think about how they missed out on and wonder what could have been. Yeah, if you could go back in time to heck with fixing any of your big life-altering mistakes, you'd be looking to buy video games off the clearance rack. As a result of the lower prices, for those who it was a curiosity, the barrier to entry was pretty low, even if you wanted to collect, which for a while, along with some of the early emulators, were pretty much the only options. All the different ways we're able to play retro games nowadays weren't really around back then, and emulation had far more of a stigma back then compared to now, so collecting original hardware and games really was the go-to method for most. With such relaxed prices for games, with it came far more relaxed collecting habits too. Prices could and would still go up a bit, sure, but it wasn't like it is now where many people panic and throw their wallet at a game out of fear they need to get it before others do and the price gets jacked up. Game hunting was a lot different too, and different as in you could actually find stuff, much better than you can nowadays, that's for sure. Times weren't as far removed from when the consoles were current, there were less people looking, and there were less people thinking they had gold when they were trying to get rid of their games. So getting deals was very much a thing, even by the low price standards of back then. Okay, but I've been saying back then a lot in this video without saying any specific years, so what exactly do I mean by that? Well, like I said before, retro gaming being considered a cool thing on a larger scale is something that happened gradually, and everyone's stories will vary, but I can at least share some personal experiences. So I played the NES in the late 90s, but I also played a lot of N64 in 2006, 2007, mostly Mario Kart with a bunch of buddies. The Nintendo Wii had just come out, was all the rage and we were considered so weird for spending most of our time playing Nintendo 64 instead. Although haters of the console would say you're so weird for playing it during any year. But I specifically remember wondering at the time how long I could play N64 with other people before it was considered totally obsolete. Imagine that. But even as recent as 2011, if you can even call that recent, I repurchased a Sega Genesis and I remember the shop I got it from. They sold mostly comic books there and they were way too excited to offload the Sega Genesis they had onto me. We're we're talking borderline evil witch poison apple vibes. I guess nobody had asked about it for months, and every time I went back, never was there anybody else in the gaming section, which was a decent sized section. Fine by me, I had the whole area to myself to look through. Heck, I could dance with the Genesis games if I wanted to before deciding which ones to buy. This was also a time where the YouTube scene for retro gamers was much different. Most channels were similar to what you see from somebody like the Happy console gamer, where you could tell they clearly just hoped there were others out there who shared the same passion for gaming. When I started my channel, I knew there were plenty of other people who shared my passion for retro gaming, I just didn't know if anybody would care about what I have to say. And you know, that was another big thing back then. Finding somebody else who was into older games could feel like winning the lottery. There were forums, sure, but the community wasn't nearly the same as it is now, and as much as it's easy to point to how some things could be looked at as 
better back then, I think having a larger community nowadays is one of the positive things. Remember, I'm all about the younger generations coming on board. You know how some people hope to have grandchildren before they die so they know their family line will live on? Well, I just hope to see younger generations playing Goof Troop on Super Nintendo before I die. But with all of that said, what I'm really curious to hear is what stories you all have about how playing older games was different back in the day. And of course, I'm specifically talking about playing games that were considered old at the time you were playing them. So for those comments and anything else you'd like to say, leave your comments and I will see ya in the next video. He's the Red Cooper, yeah, and he's talking, talking about video games. He's the Red